16th of April, 2024. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. You can call in at 709. We're in Canada. So you got to put a one in front of that. If you're outside of Canada or across Canada, 1-709-589-4406-4406. I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> I got a poll for everybody tonight. I got a very confusing poll, too. Should TEPCO be forced from Fukushima and replaced to construct a fuel pool retaining wall to save humanity. Or another option in the bottom is the common spent fuel is already gone from the common spent fuel pool. And that's what the poll is about. Typical to move a major slope that poses a threat to the nuclear fuel pool. Typical is going to dig out a hundred thousand tons of the embankment and that's the common spent fuel pool <laughs> the tsunami ran right through it by the way it melted down <clears throat> and they acknowledged that uh, renewed chain nuclear chain reaction feared a renewed and a renewed another chain reaction so when the fuel pool has a chain reaction it's gone and that's gone. It doesn't stop. And the common spent fuel pool uh, had 6,375 spent fuel assemblies. It could easily be double that number because they don't have a repository. So we covered this last night and I got to thinking to myself, huh, why are they coming up with this story? Now they say that it's going to take them a decade very dangerous work to dig out the back of it. Ten years. Ten years. According to them, they um, decommissioned Reactor 4 and Reactor 3 in ten years. Right? That's Reactor 3 and Reactor 4. Now, the official story is it doesn't look like that. The whole story is insane. No matter how you try to read the story or tell the story, you come across sounding like a crazy man. So this is the media, is just a fraction of them, major ones. Now their their version is they're in the fuel pool at the top of the building. Now the building to the left is the building they're talking about. But that doesn't exist. It actually doesn't exist. So they took these stumps of reactor three and four, and then they put these contraptions on top of them. Well, they don't physically touch it. And then they claim that they're in the building getting the fuel out of the pools in 2013-14 for Reactor 4. And in 2019-20-21 for Reactor 3 to your left. And what's interesting about it is there's no fuel pool. They're 100% fake, faking it. It's 100% fake. The tanks are all faked, just like the buildings, right? They're just, there's no fuel pools. We, we know at X-Reactor 3 went up several kilometers, the reactor cores and the fuel pools, straight up in the air, and that was the end of that fairy tale, right? And so it's very confusing. Why is TEPCO, which is not a decommissioned authority, shouldn't exist? It should have been just... Like, how would you put this? I wonder. Um, it's so crazy. You get the most dangerous thing in human history, and when things go wrong, you leave the, the idiots in charge. And they admit that they had a chain reaction, nuclear meltdown, in the common spent fuel pool, and that in 2011 there was a renewed chain reaction feared at the spent fuel pool. 
The building that has the common spent fuel pool, cooling, nuclear fuel, left foreground, stands against a slope. And so the wall behind it, instead of digging out 100,000 tons, which is what the, the, the story is, which is the cover story, obviously, it's a chain nuclear meltdown, it's gone China syndrome, and they're going to dig it up. That's what's going on. But it's going to take 10 years or 20 years or who knows how long. They say 10. But the cover story is they're worried about a landslide. So all you really got to do is put rebar and just reinforce it, spray cement over it. It's already incredibly thick. And all of it was done after the nuclear meltdowns. You plan to excavate a massive slope that looms over a pool. Now, these, these so-called slopes, which is probably a good word, you can see a road up there, right? Uh, and then, like, so the whole thing is in layers. It's all tied in to the top, and I mean it's tied in. It's not a shabby job either. This is an incredible amount of engineers worked on this originally. This is not going to cause a landslide. The sites when they're built are designed and so they're gutted, then they're leveled out, they're put enormous amount of shale and, and rocks and there's a whole half a billion dollars spent just uh, laying out the site so that it can't have a landslide inside the site itself because those attributes were removed when it was engineered. Common pool, which they said is 5,197 spent and unused fuel pools, is actually over 6,375, but it's actually more than that because you don't have a repository, so the common spent fuel pool is completely stuffed with fuel rods. It's at the same height as reactor 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's right behind reactor 4, and the tsunami would have ran right through it. It's much it's much lower than the reactors on top of that. So the nuclear... Now, these buildings were originally completely pixelated out. And you see the cement walls behind it? Like, it's, in, it's just... It doesn't make sense to suggest that they're worried about a landslide when everything is cemented and tied into the highways around it and into the administration areas that were previously administration, the pavement and everything, and unused fuel assemblies. I have no idea what they're talking about because you don't put unused fuel assemblies in the pool. They're not dangerous, right? They're only dangerous when they go through a chain reaction, which is another way them to water down the enormity of what's really going on. So let's say there was a section there they're worried about. All you're going to do is just... You would just tap right into it, and you would shove uh, rebar straight in there. You would just pour cement over it and reinforce it. You, you wouldn't dig out 100,000 tons over 10 years, 10 years, over 10 years. So what are they talking about? It's a cover story for something, and what they're saying they're doing is simply not going to be true because the common spent fuel pool melted down. And I'll show you the evidence coming up here in a bit. Being cooled in water, the unused fuel assemblies, what, I don't know what they're talking about. So when you zoom in on the pictures they're providing, they're, like even if this was a landslide, that is not going to damage the building. Because like, the whole wall is not going to give out. The whole wall, they're all tied together. This was engineered. Enormous amounts of money were put into this after the nuclear meltdown. And there was no limit on the amount of money. So TEPCO is expected to remove about 100,000 cubic meters. 100,000 cubic meters, which is 100,000 one-ton black bags. 100,000 of these one-ton black bags. <coughs> of soil from the slope in an approximately 10-year project. A 10-year project. The common spent fuel pool is being sprayed with water contains 6,375 spent fuel assemblies March 22, 2011. So this is the common spent fuel pool in an approximately a 10-year project. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't take 10 years 
to, to remove 100,000 tons of soil. We actually have equipment now, like, you know, excavators and stuff like that, that can remove a ton with every shovel full. And so if you use a whole bunch of them, it's pretty easy work. It's mindless work. It's stupid simple. And there's no reason it should take 10 years. It could, however, take 10 years if you're trying to get fuel from a meltdown removed. Now, now you're talking... And who's going to be here in 10 years to remind everybody that they said it was only going to take 10 years? And if it takes 20 years and 30 years, there's not going to be any opposition, right? A boring survey, but until you identify the weak layer that can easily crumble over a wide area within the plant, the premises. So, uh, again, right, the way they're framing the narrative doesn't add up. Like, there is no weak layers. All you, if it's a weak layer, you just put rebar and more cement. Everything is tied together. And why, why would you spend 10 years digging a hole? That makes The only thing that makes sense is the common spent fuel pool melted down. Now, remember, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, which is equal to a highway like this wrapped around the entire planet more than once of one-ton bags. Because they picked up 30 million one-ton bags in, uh, how many years was it? It was like six years or something. So why does it take 10 years to pick up 100,000 when you picked up 30 million in just, 10, uh, just six years? The geologists and the Nuclear Regulatory Commissioners, part scumbag, the other part demonic demon, so the landslide can occur on the slope in question if a minor earthquake strikes or even without any tremor. So what are you talking about? You can't have a landslide when everything is reinforced. Like you can't have a landslide there with a minor earthquake because you've had major earthquakes that's never cracked open. And like two th we covered a story last night of a 9.2 earthquake, a 6.5 on the Shindu scale, which is 7 which multiply it by 1.428. You divide 7 and a 10, which is the Richter scale, and you get 1.428, 1.43. You multiply that by 6.5, which was the Shindu scale in 2021, 60 kilometers off the coastline, and at, in Fukushima, it was around 5,500 schools uh, had to claim insurance. It's a severe shaking, right? Did, did they have... You're right on the fault line. <clears throat> if this was true, they would have done this. It would have been all over a long time ago. So what the hell are they up to? They have a China syndrome at the common spent fuel pool, most likely is the story, right? TEPCO said a landslide would not affect the safety functions of the nuclear fuel pool. It's hard to comprehend 30 million one-ton bags because this is not even a fraction, what you're looking at. But they picked up 30 million one-ton bags of radioactive soil, and the, the minimum number was 100,000 atoms per kilogram. You've got to multiply it by 66.6 .6 to get a square meter of surface. But the NRA is concerned that if the sediment from a landslide flows into the pool, nuclear fuel may not remain cooled and in the worst case scenario eventually melt. But it did melt. They, it melted twice. They had a nuclear chain reaction and then another renewed chain reaction, a criticality event in the spent fuel storage pool, which had 11, 12 million pounds. Which is um, um, unimaginable amount that has gone through a chain reaction. See, and when you think about 30 million one-ton bags, <laughs> this is literally nothing. If you got 30 million one-ton bags stacked up and you took this many out of it, you would never know the difference. But if you were driving along the highway and you've seen these bags on the side of the road and you've seen, you seen radiation signs on them, You'll be horrified, right? It's like, holy goodness, there's a lot of radioactive bags there. But you got to realize how evil this industry actually is. This, 
this parasitic industry. So about 4,000 fuel assemblies units are being kept in the buildings that houses number one to number six. So what they're, they're, they're watering down the true numbers over and over and over in increments over 13 years. And the average person now has lost complete touch of the reality of what happened. So if you take this many bags out of the 30 million one ton bags you picked up, you'll never notice the difference, right? You'll never miss it. If you take all of these bags you see in here, and like, I'm like, when I say this, the 30 million one ton bags are equal to these bags and this highway wrapped around the entire planet more than once, that's what it is equal to. Which was only 3% of the land. And at what, what point should we hold this idiot industry accountable? It's never been held accountable for 80 years. And it's so, ins the current generation is so actually insane, so vicious, so sadistic. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the horrifying part is we're the only people on the planet talking about it. It's mind-numbing that that is what the truth. It's mind-numbing. You know, in, in a time when everybody got an opinion about everything, they got, like, you can ask people about anything, they got opinion. But if you ask them about Fukushima, they got no opinion. So this is the like an unbelievably dangerous industry that has social engineered the population of the entire planet to the point where they're worried about tritium instead of the 30 million one ton bags. And if you took these bags you're looking at here, if this, these are pictures I made, which you're looking at tonight. We've been doing that for a few days, and I apologize to anybody that gets confused by it. If you took... These bags, out of the 30 million one ton bags, you still would notice these bags missing. Of, which is 30 million one ton bags of radiation that they picked up. If, you, if this was real, and you took this out of that equation, if you had 30 million one ton bags in a single place, and you took that unbelievable mass of pile, you wouldn't know that, that it was gone. If it was an aerial shot or something, right? or you were in a skyscraper looking at it, you would never know it was gone. Like the amount of radiation he picked up is, I don't have a word to describe it properly because of the harm we're talking about, which is only 3% of the land of the Fukushima prefecture. You should scrape up the topsoil of the entire planet, the 30% of the planet that we got access to, the rest of it, we can't do nothing with. But don't think it wasn't irradiated. Unbelievably irradiated. Surge in airborne radioactive release has gone on for years in Fukushima, exceeding 25,000 times normal levels. Again, if, you, if, this, if this was a real picture of one-ton bags, and you took this from the 30 million one-ton bags that came out of Fukushima that was picked up in 3% of the land, and, and the land that they wanted to grow food in. So every time it rains, that land is immediately recontaminated with incredible doses of radiation. And those communities. that it, The whole industry is insane. X-ray-like images shows how radioactivity spread throughout the bodies of Fukushima wildlife. I can't articulate it enough, the enormity of what we're talking about, that the world is sleepwalking on. If you took all these bags out of the 30 million one ton bags, you would never know these bags were missing. That on its own, like, when you see this picture here, this is media telling you that they're in a building that doesn't exist. Reactor 4. There's four sides of Reactor 4. But at the time that they shot the pit, the videos, that's what it looked like. Here we are. And which, and so they're claiming they're 120 feet above that stump, that wreckage. The radioactive followers, so that covered the whole planet. 
let's just say 20 days later here. The, the model is based on 30 days. When the model stops, it's 30 days later, but that plume never stops. Just because the video I got stops, don't mean the plume stopped. This is only 30 days of radioactive fallout of a million to 10 million atoms. So you should have picked up the topsoil of the entire planet and the entire ocean floor, which still doesn't do it justice. You still don't eliminate the issue. So they're going to spend 10 years, 10 years, 10 years removing topsoil from behind the common spent fuel pool. <laughs> Which, by the way, in 2021, there were 736 pictures released. This is the common spent fuel pool right here. Now, once you zoomed in, you start realizing, wait a second, everything is pixelated. Why is, why is the fuel pool completely pixelated? Why is reactor 4, 3, 2, and 1 completely pixelated? That's the common spent fuel pool. That's right behind reactor 4 at the same height on the same road. And it's nowhere near as tall as those 190-foot buildings. That's reactor 6, 5 is the first one. Reactor 6 is the second one. Why is reactor 6 pixelated out in the pictures that were released with no fanfare, no explanations, but had some in interesting attributes to them? There was another spot also up here above that section right here that is completely pixelated out too, which is located over, and let me, let me just show you. because this is part of the equation. That's this section here. It is that section over there. So this section here, right here, from my finger up and on both sides of it, is now completely covered with pavement and everything else in administration buildings, apparently. But that's the old picture. So that, that was also pixelated out, and so was the common spin fuel pool. <clears throat> so it's, it's incumbent that somebody has a conversation, but ideally we need thousands of people having that conversation. The industry will completely fall apart. Every, every nuclear scientist will have a seizure and have to go home early from work. Common pool cooling nuclear fuel, uh, these are called uh, common spent fuel pools, not common pool cooling nuclear fuel. Common spent fuel pools, you won't find those connotations anywhere in the videos. But they picked up enough one-ton bags to wrap around the entire planet on the highway and fill it up with one-ton bags, which is only 3% of the land. But, but they should have, you know, done it to the entire planet. Now this is a Medusa, which you're looking at right there. That's the plutonium mixed oxide fuel reactor three. And that on its own can cover the whole planet with one ton bags. But we had four Medusas. This is the reactor four. And the inventories we're talking about, just a single building dwarfs all nuclear accidents in human histories combined. Each of these buildings, there's four of them, lost their reactor cores and two fuel pools, and you see them in the red depiction there and over there, and the reactor cores at the top of the building where the fuel pool is too. They're clearly gone. But there's not a single academic in the nuclear industry, not a single alumni in the nuclear industry, not a single professor, university, Greenpeace, Ernie Gunnarsson, Helen Callaghan, Christopher Busby, na you name them, not a single one has ever come out and acknowledged the fuel pools are gone. Not one. Despite the fact that as every academic, when he's seen the picture, knows the fuel pool is gone and the reactor core, every one of them. And every one of them remains silent. And the media was so emboldened by the silence that they pretended they were actually in the fuel pool because they knew nobody was going to call them out.
Go down to Mark and all these one-ton bags. Dana is wrong. Dana is delusional. Dana is crazy. Because you can do this right around the entire planet. If you actually picked up all of the topsoil like you should have, it's enough to cover North American one-ton bags from the radioactive fallout. The entire North America should look like that no matter where you go. If you took all the one-ton bags from uh, from Australia, from Europe, from all the continents, Africa and everywhere else, and brought them all to North America, you can fill up the entire, if you actually picked up the bags you should have picked up of radioactive fallout, because this is what we're talking about. Again, like, if you removed this many bags from the 30 million one-ton bags that they picked up, you would never know it was gone. But I can, if you had to go clean this up yourself, just deal with the bags and move them somewhere else is an enormous job, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's look at this maybe another way. such a complicated story, but it's not. It's really not. I got a good way of explaining it, so just bear with me. My old brain start to slowly oil here again. I decided I needed to do at least another video on this topic. Because how are you going to spend 10 years digging out a hill right behind the common spent fuel pool and not associated with the common spent fuel pool? How does that, how does that actually work? <clears throat> oh, to be crazy. Must be nice to be just half crazy. Let's go from the other side of the country and work our way back to Fukushima. How about that? Over 30,000 square kilometers in Japan is blanketed by radioactive cesium, which is a British terminology, which means you should have picked up around 30 billion one-ton bags. I was, I'm sure it's a lot more than that, right? Typical radioactive substances from Fukushima belong to the landowners, not us as November tests show massive contamination far outside the evacuation zone. Japan radiation expert, my, radi my results show contamination is spread all over the country, which means you should have picked up about three trillion one-ton bags, which is enough to cover all the highways on the planet with one-ton bags. What do you want an industry like that on your planet for? How is that even allowed to exist? And how is it that our universities are weaponized against the 8 million species in the future of humanity. Why, well, Fukushima is worse than Chernobyl. First off, if you go now and look up Chernobyl, they'll say Chernobyl is the world's worst nuclear accident. This is how much control they actually have. When Chernobyl was a paper towel compared to Fukushima, and Chernobyl ain't no paper towel. It was brutal, the damage done worldwide. But it doesn't hold a candle stick to the Fukushima site. If you were on Fukushima site and you were holding a candlestick, or if there was just a candlestick somewhere on Fukushima site, you're not going to see it. And that's how you should compare Fu Chernobyl to Fukushima. The difference is that startling. Japan must be the only place in the world with several million atoms of radioactive isotopes in urban areas, incompatible, highly radioactive blue algaes and school roots. Scumbag gunners and all of Japan is contaminated. Well, no one need gunners in the telestat. He was put there on a pedestal to try to give himself some street creds. But he's a vile, despicable person who told you the fuel pools were intact when clearly they're not intact. Uh, 
yellow radioactive substances in a neighborhood near Tokyo. And that stuff is around 10 million atoms per kilogram. Tokyo Vice Governor suggests Fukushima draft. We all Japanese must face it. So they actually created a lab where they can bring in blue collar workers to work at the nuclear meltdowns. Which meant you were going to give them lethal doses, right? TEPCO has worked vigilantly to shut out close scrutiny of the Fukushima plant. Japan government agencies funding projects to monitor online information about Fukushima. Around the clock monitoring of blogs on nuclear power and Twitter accounts. Just try wrapping your mind around that statement. Twelve million yen spent to censor Twitter, which at that time I think was equal to fifty-four thousand U.S. dollars, being spent by a city starting to burn disaster debris. They wanted to censor one hundred fifty-five thousand U.S. dollars to censor Twitter for baseless rumors. The whole story is insane. The, Fuku the Fukushima story is, is absolutely nightmarish. And we got to deal with it too sweet. We have to deal with it right away. Intelligence agency pressured researchers to withhold information on the spread of the Fukushima radiation. And you can't blame them, right? If you're evil, that is. Japan is considered moving the capital away from Tokyo because Tokyo is brutal radioactive folly. It's brutal. It's brutal. Like the numbers we're talking about is, uh, I've never heard tell of nothing about it in history. The press watches the government dumps radioactive waste into the Tokyo Bay. This is unmitigated evil we're talking about. They got everybody convinced, right, that only tritium is at Fukushima, and don't worry, it's in a thousand tanks. They got protests all over the world at the one time last year. Please don't release the tritium. <laughs> and, uh, please don't release the tritium into the ocean. <laughs> please. People all over the world protesting tritium, which was organized by them themselves. New indoor radiation dose records at Fukushima, five sieverts per hour at Reactor 1. It was a million sieverts per hour outside of Reactor 1, for goodness sakes. Mysterious black substances has a million atoms per kilogram of cesium. And if you got cesium, you're going to go 100 times more strontium-90. Japan government prepares a plan to flee Tokyo. Well, don't take the highways because they're going to be completely radioactive. Tokyo has the third highest cesium levels of all testing locations throughout Japan, with 36 million people metropolitan in Tokyo. A large amount of radioactive dust fell in Tokyo. So they should scrape up all the topsoil in the entire country, all of Europe, all of China and Russia and everywhere else, all of North America. They should sh scrape up all the topsoil and leaves and dig up all the buildings and put them on a nuclear repository for millions of years. Fukushima government is dumping tons of radioactive mud from decontamination to the rivers, freshwater rivers, at night. Uh, radioactive firewood at 43,000 atoms per kilogram in the ashes after. So, like, there's so much, like, they can't get rid of the sewage. The whole story is insane. Over 30 million tons of nuclear waste in Fukushima alone. That's separate from the 30 million one-ton bags. Professor now reveals a high level of radioactive materials detected over 1,000 kilometers from Fukushima last April. A new, a new contamination map shows cesium-137. If you got cesium-137, you're going to have uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, curium, Krypton, Xenon, the whole list, and in, in absurd amount. <clears throat> the 
You could have an Aisha map show CC 137 deposit. When CC 137 pulses energy 600 feet. So if you fill up the one ton back black bags with what they said was 100,000 atoms per kilogram, if you're within 600 feet of one of the bags, you're getting a brutal dose. A brutal dose. Because there's 100,000 pulses per kilogram, and there's 1,000 kilograms in the bag. So, so multiply 100,000 by 1,000, right? So just, and it's pull, it'll pulse right through your body. It's brutal. It's a brutal energy. It pulses through your house, through your neighbor's house, through that neighbor's house, and then it radiates you. Bloomberg, hot spots are spreading. Government to check radiation up to 460 kilometers from the meltdown. And they picked up one ton bags that far away. Hot particles are found 400 kilometers from Fukushima. Radioactivity of over 40 billion becquels a kilogram. 40 billion. Scumbag gunners and looking for street creds again. Iodine 131 levels rise 350 kilometers from Fukushima to sewage plants. Do you know what's in a sewage plant and where it comes from? It comes from families, <laughs> the children, the elderly, the vulnerable. And everybody's vulnerable when it comes to radiation, actually. 300 times more radiation released into the atmosphere from burning radiation, the radioactive debris, and claimed by the government. Writers, contamination concerns are growing. High radiation levels, 270 kilometers from the meltdowns. Scumbag Gunnarsson, who told you the fuel pools didn't melt down. What a despicable thing to do to people, what he done and Helen Caldercott done and Christopher Busby done. Strontium found in 2,200 locations in Fukushima. So it's not surprising it's in Yokohama, 250 kilometers away. So all of this stuff quantifies picking up a billions of one-ton bags of radiation, all of it. Absorbed radiation doses of iodine 131 was 10 times higher than the, 132 was 10 times higher than 131. Plus the 132 is nine times more effective at irradiating the thyroid, which means you're producing radioactive hormones or your children or the birds or the insects or the mammals or the animals. Cesium contamination stretched to Japan's west coast. I wish it was that easy. I really do. Uh, the Neptunium 239 didn't just stretch to the Japan's west coast. The Neptunium 239, which decays to Plutonium 239, which is named after the devil, by the way. Spread right around the entire planet in 20 days. It didn't stop there because it never is still coming out of there. Cesium contamination stretches Japan's west coast 30,000 becquels a square meter in Nagano, 250 kilometers from the meltdown, which means, which is uh, Ishikawa Prefecture, right? Which means that should be abandoned. It should never. And look at the earthquake they had on January the 1st. My goodness. West of Tokyo, 24,000 atoms a kilogram of radioactive cesium in the soil samples, 250 kilometers from Fukushima. High levels of strontium-90 detected 250 kilometers from the meltdown. Strontium-90, 245 kilometers, 150 times background in Yokohama City. Newly released Nuclear Regulatory Commission's emails, and I got 4 million of them linked below in the bottom of the description. Over 240 kilometers from the meltdown, technetium-99. Government session revealed 400,000 times normal radioactive xenon-133 levels in Chiba. Well, xenon-133 is completely man-made. You know, there is no normal. And so you, would want, you want to multiply that by, say, 30, which is what they consider normal, which is left over which is, you know, 
gamma emitters that is left over from the nuclear war. I'm sorry, you call it nuclear testing, I believe. It's a nuclear war, same nuclear weapons, same radioactive fallout. 230,000 atoms per square meter of cesium in athletic fields, six times as high as the limit set for radiation control zones, which should be, you know, pre-Fukushima was 185 atoms per square meter was the radiation at a nuclear plants. After Fukushima, there, there is no limits. Oh, no, it's fine. It'll be fine. The radioactive black substances was uh, 46,625 atoms per kilogram. A cesium. But it was also at around 20 million atoms per kilogram, actually. Absorb radiation doses, iodine 132 was 10 times higher than the 131. We covered that. Tokyo Exodus and Collapse Spent Fuel Pool 4 as rods melt through the concrete wall. Well, Reactor 4 clearly is gone. It doesn't stop the media from pretending that they were in the fuel pool at the top of a building that doesn't even exist. Like, this is not a game. You, the world needs to get their act together. The writers obtained the secret Tokyo evacuation evapor, evacuation scenario. Fukushima reactors fail as the spent fuel rods melt and mix with cement and fall into the building. But that's simply not what happened, is it? They didn't fall into the building. The, the building kicked them out of it. They kicked the reactor cores and the fuel pools were two kilometers straight up in the air. It's not an excursion. This is an event. And this makes Chernobyl look like a paper towel. It's hard to comprehend how big these buildings actually are, see? And, s and so people become lulled into complacency. Writers obtained secret Tokyo evacuation scenario. Fukushima reactors fail as the spent fuel rods melt. Local Tokyo officials, it became clear that radiation came further south than we thought. Nursery schools with kids rolling in the dirt and tasting it. Japan un unveils a plan to develop a massive government backup city 300 miles west of Tokyo for 200,000 staff. Because no one wants to work in Tokyo no more. It's a radioactive, nu uh, radioactive nuclear wasteland. 276,000 atoms per kilogram. So you multiply that by... 66.6, .6, you get around 18 million atoms per kilogram. In Tokyo, after rainfall. These are absurd numbers. And anybody that mentions uh, microsievers or millisievers are trying to confuse you, or trying to manipulate you, or trying to coerce you and deceive you and lead you to the poison drinking well, right? Ay, 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 ay. Government simulation shows radioactive plume of Krypton 85 over Tokyo, March the 15th. They didn't need a simulation. They actually had, they knew what landed. Uh, reactor number three with MOX, a mix oxide, it was a plutonium mixed oxide fuel exploded. This is fuel that's already gone through a chain reaction, right? Contamination in Tokyo suburbs, three times higher than areas one mile from Fukushima Daiichi. So Tokyo is, is a nuclear wasteland. So it's not significant contamination in Tokyo. It's nightmarish. You need to abandon Tokyo. Many, many thousands of wealthy people immediately left Tokyo in the first couple of days. Those who were in the know, right? 50,000 atoms a kilogram of radioactive cesium found in the soil near Tokyo. It's terrifying that the sample 
was from the side of the street with children walk every day. So 50,000 atoms per kilogram, you got to multiply it by 66.6 to get a square meter where a child stands and spins their arms. Even the dust reported in Tokyo in the fog was at 4,000 atoms a kilogram of cesium. And so just, and notice how they barely mentioned anything. We, no, we got some other examples, but it's mostly cesium, right? And this has been going on for 80 years. This is how they manipulated society into complacency. People in Tokyo, the black substance is here. This is at 10 to 20 million atoms per kilogram. Neutron rays measured in Tokyo. A supermarket with 40,000 microsieverts per hour. These are unconscionable numbers. Uh, well over 1.5 million atoms per kilogram near a church in Tokyo. Kilogram per kilogram. These are the most nutty numbers imaginable. Tokyo area soil testing finds radioactivity up to Chernobyl at 919,000 atoms per kilogram. And so just because Chernobyl manipulated people to stay in a radioactive wasteland don't mean it was safe and don't mean there wasn't catastrophic. It's catastrophic to the, to the DNA of, uh, of all species. It just simply should never exist. 300,000 atoms per kilogram or per square meter radioactive iodine near Tokyo before the end of March only includes iodine 131. Right? For every 131, there's 10 times more 132, 30, uh, 30 times more 133, 31 times more iodine 129. Catast we're talking about catastrophic. And if you got that, then there's going to be saturated with curium isotopes, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. Cesium, gamma levels, because apparently beta, alphas, and neutrons don't exist when it comes to the nuclear industry, well, to fallout. Cesium levels spiking with unusually high amounts of fallout in Tokyo, up to 300,000 atoms per kilogram, but they're only acknowledging cesium, which I find to be the most insane statement imaginable. And you will too if you if you understood these nuances, these details, these minutias. Two hundred seventy-six thousand atoms a kilogram near Tokyo, eighteen million atoms per square meter. Professor, it's true about seventy percent of Japan's territory is polluted. They only picked up three percent of Fukushima, and ended up with thirty million one-ton bags. Right. And if you took these bags from the 30 million one ton bags, you would never notice they were missing. That's how much we're talking about. Yeah, you can have a highway like this wrapped around the entire planet, and you wouldn't come close to Hanford, what they dumped in the soil. You can build a wall like this, say six feet wide. Say this wall, it is here, you can build this probably 200 feet tall and wrap it right around the entire planet and still doesn't equal what they dumped in the soil at Hanford. But nuclear meltdowns are also a, an incredible creature you have to worry about. So the common spent fuel pool is up there. Why is it redacted? Why is reactor 4 redacted? Why is reactor 3 redacted? Why is the stack redacted? Why are we seeing these particular attributes of redacted buildings? That's common spent fuel pool. Why was it redacted? If just this one building melting down is a catastrophic, catastrophic event for every species on the entire planet and for every human on the planet. There's heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, and these are catastrophic problems we're talking about. Respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, 
There's Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. All of this, by the way, has exploded post Fukushima, hasn't it? So they come up with other ways to blame it on something else, and that's what they've been doing. Why is the common spent fuel pool redacted? The common spent fuel pool could easily contain 8,300 and 10 fuel assemblies, and most likely did, because they don't have a repository to store it. The common spent fuel pool, you can see see all the transport trucks, um, containers stacked up behind it? That's because the tsunami pushed all that up there. What do you really think happened to the fuel pools? I mean, it took out power for 1,200 miles of the coastline and the telephone poles. You really think they got power there? Where they have multiple nuclear meltdowns and detonations all around. The fuel pool, Comspan fuel pool is right by reactor four, three, two, and one. You cannot get near reactor four after number four. Uh, you can't get near the Comspan fuel pool after reactor four detonated. And then when reactor three and reactor two and reactor one detonations, you couldn't get near this. It melted down. And this is why they're doing a 10 year dig behind it. A tent, they're going to dig behind it for 10 years. Move 100,000 tons. It makes zero sense when you, all you would really do is you would just put rebar wherever it's weak and pour more cement over to reinforce it. Why would you dig it out? Right? There's no science to what they're saying. That was the story that came out yesterday. And that's the story we were covering tonight. And so I'm only doing a short video tonight because I want, I'm hoping more people will watch the video if I do a shorter video. And because this subject is breaking news, I'm hoping that the world might take a little pause and ask themselves the real question. Start looking at the documentation that we provided tonight and say, they're not removing t soil because they're worried about a landslide, they're trying to recover the common spent fuel pool meltdown. Because everything's already reinforced. Everything's tied into the roads, the hills, and everything else, right? This was done by engineers. This is not, well, it was engineered. It was done by homeless and the destitute and the victims of society. Immigrants don't speak the language. But they were provided with the expertise and the equipment that they were, you know, far away organizing everything. So the common spent fuel pool, where they say there's 5,167, is there's actually at least 6,375 assemblies. Each assembly is 1,800 pounds. It has 100 fuel rods, and each fuel rod is saturated with hideous amounts of radiation because it's gone through a chain reaction. So let's, let's just do the math on this. Let's just do the math on this. Hi, everybody. Yeah, quite a confusing uh, poll tonight. My apologies. I, I was just trying to approach it differently, right? Because this conversation needs... So you got uh, 6,375, 6,375 assemblies. Times... There's 100 fuel rods in each assembly. It's 637,000 fuel rods. And just one of these at a, at a subway, for instance, everybody walks past it for a million years, will die that day. Multiply that by 18 pounds, because each fuel rod weighs 18 pounds, 12 feet long. That's 11 and a half million pounds. Nagasaki was like 20 pounds. But the problem is that the nuclear meltdown the nuclear meltdown like all the water you spray on is atomized and aerosol and ionized and radiated and released as radioactive fallout. All the cement is consumed at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. All the steel everything is consumed. All the rocks, the gravel, everything gets consumed at these enormous temperatures. 
is ionized, atomized and aerosoled, and ionized and irradiated and released as radioactive particles. And radioactive particles are brutal. It's brutal emitters we're talking about. But what, uh, tonight's, I just wanted to put out a, not a long video. How do we do here? We're almost an hour. So we'll just let it go there in the hopes the world comes to its senses, watches the video, understands the urgency, and starts having a conversation. Because we need to have a conversation. And I need, unfortunately, to be a part of that conversation, or at least the documentation. And by rights, I desperately need to be part of that conversation, whether I want to or not, to keep everybody honest. Because I'm not going to tolerate any lies. I'm not going to tolerate it. And I'll provide the documentations for all of my assertions like I've been doing for years and years and years. And it seems like forever. And there's no end in sight because I'm not giving up and I'm not going away. I'm not going to be stopping. And the research is showing it's an extinction level event for goodness sakes. You know, you're talking about the food was banned in 14 prefectures by 55 countries for a decade because it's not like a banana. It's not like a potato chip. It's not like walking in sunshine. And the research expeditions, we done them because we had so many headlines quantifying that we needed to go and do the research. And we went from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska for six years, four to five months a year. And what we discovered was stunning. The species to your left are actually exterminated. You'll never take the pictures again. They're gone from the British Columbia to Alaska coastline all the way to California, New Mexico. The species are permanently exterminated. And, w and what do we do? Do we sit in silence and watch the latest Netflix shows and everything else, pretend it's not happening? Or do we fight with every morsel of our body so that the world can wake up and come up with solutions, if it's possible, and at least hold a nuclear industry accountable minimum? The nuclear industry deserves to be held accountable for exterminating our planet, because that's who done it. And this is not up for debate. This is a fact. The evidence is unassailable. Do you really think that they're faking being in buildings, react nuclear meltdowns because it's like a banana and a potato chip and walking in sunshine? Come on. I know because the research expeditions that I, there was grueling. It was grueling. And I was under siege the entire time. I was demonized and still am today, vilified, marginalized, assaulted. I've been shot at. I've been arrested. They've done everything you can imagine at me. And the truth is more important, right? They've humiliated me every way you can imagine. But yet here I am every day going to war because I didn't do nothing to nobody. I'm not a bad person for being honest. I'm not a bad person for taking the information, going out and doing species comes to verify it. And to my utter horror, the species are exterminated. This is an extinction level event. And the world needs to get its act together and act appropriately. The nuclear industry needs to be held accountable for the lies like these people, your loving media that pretended they were in a fuel pool, we can hold them accountable. You know, and and I, I Twittered, I sent this on Twitter to all the Greenpeace organizations and everybody else. And they all blocked me and took the picture down, all of them. I even sent them this and they blocked me and took the pictures down. All the major medias, all the government agencies. I don't give a fuck about any of them. 
I went after every one of them. And I said, hey, wake up. Here's the truth. Here's the facts. Here's the, the documentation. And what do I get? I get arrested over and over and over. I get gag orders over and over and over. Because the whole bloody thing is so corrupt for so long that the inbreeds have taken over the entire system. It's unbelievable, actually. But it's simple. The evidence is 100% clear. <clears throat> we'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is not very far away <laughs> in Dana's world. So much work to do these shows, right? But tonight I, I was like, I switched gears and I said, I got to do a show about the common spent fuel pool only. And I said that last night to myself. If I don't get my acting, if we don't take this opportunity to come out and assail this ridiculous story that they're proposing, do we missed an opportunity and we'll regret that. So I won't live to regret it because I've done the best I can to start a debate and a conversation. Should TEPCO be forced from Fukushima and replaced to construct a fuel pool retaining wall to save humanity. Well, see, that was a misnomer. That's not a yes, unfortunately. And my apologies to everybody that got confused. The truth is the common spent fuel is already gone. That was the right answer. The common spent fuel pool is actually already gone. The common spent fuel pool is already gone. I got no idea how to end the poll because they got the stupid shit there blocking the poll and you got no way to end the poll. It's freaking nuts, isn't it? There's no way. Oh, that's how you do it. You just end the poll that way. Oh, and uh, James Lucid donated 200 Canadian last night again. My goodness. Unbelievable, brother. Thank you. And uh, I'll see everybody tomorrow night. Not on my game tonight, by the way. Thanks for everybody. Everybody have a great night and a great day tomorrow. I'll see everybody tomorrow night at the same time. And uh, we'll be doing a new cycle tomorrow night. We're going to cover the story again, probably every day for a long time. We'll touch on that story, make sure that it's front and center. A great night and a great day tomorrow. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody on the other side. Thank you, everybody, for finding the time, the energy, and the courage to come and have a conversation, a real conversation. Unlike the cowardly, despicable nuclear industry, you folks are the heroes. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Take care.